Hello and welcome to today's screencast lesson. Before we start with the actual lesson, I'm just on the Teams general chat here, so you know where you need to get your files from. So if you go up to the top, press files, we're looking at cardiovascular malfunctions today. So if you click on this and then download this blue um, Microsoft Word document for me, as I go through this screencast, you will be working on your worksheet here. You can download, download the PowerPoint if you wanted, and also in here is going to be this screencast as well. So let's get started. Okay, so what we're looking at, we're looking at monitoring treatment and care needs for cardiovascular malfunctions. We're specifically looking at hypertension. Okay, we're not going to look at coronary heart disease until next lesson. So what is it? Hypertension is high blood pressure. You don't need to overcomplicate it. There is a definition for it. However, in an exam, if they ask you to say what hypertension is, you'll get a mark saying high blood pressure. Okay, so the little definition we've got is it's the force exerted by the blood on the inside of the vessels. Now, this is a um, high blood pressure monitor here, and it's got a specific name. We're going to go through that today. Now, there's two numbers. You can't really see it, but there's a top number, and it actually says 143 there, and there's a bottom number, 91. Now, <clears throat> these two numbers equate to terms that we've already come across before. Remember, with the heart, we've got systole and diastole. Systole is when the heart beats, and diastole is when the heart is relaxed and filling with blood. These two readings are the numbers that are here. So 143 here is the number of the systolic blood pressure within the artery walls as it beats. This 91 is the pressure within the arteries or the blood vessels when the heart is um, relaxing and filling with blood. Okay, so... High blood pressure damages blood vessels. That's what high blood pressure causes or does. And there's other causes as well to high blood pressure, which we will go on about in a minute. Now, how to monitor blood pressure. This thing here is called a Svigo manometer. Okay, so here it is. Bit of a mouthful. Um, so it's Svigo manometer. And this here just monitors our blood pressure. Now, these readings are important, okay, specifically, this one is very important, okay, so this is classed as ideal and healthy, 120 over 80, so this would be systolic pressure, 120, diastolic pressure, 80, and this would be classed as, this, this rating is ideal and healthy. If you go to the doctors and you have regular blood pressure readings and you, you go over 120, and 80 okay it's called pre high blood pressure now it's it's not saying you have high blood pressure it's saying you're in that you're in that realm where you could potentially get hypertension therefore what they do is monitor you and they start to implement lifestyle changes which we're going to go through if you are over 140 systolic and 90 diastolic you have hypertension and this increases the risk of stroke heart attacks and kidney damage which again, we're going to go through on a later stage with regards to causes and risks, risk factors. Okay, so hypertension, consequences and causes. So consequences of high blood pressure. First of all, just term atherosclerosis. Now we're going to go through this in a bit more detail in one of our other lessons. This is when the arteries become clogged with fatty substances, just called plaque or erythroma. Now, what happens is fatty deposits start to get left in our arteries and essentially causes atherosclerosis, which could potentially cause a blood clot and then lead to strokes and coronary heart disease. Okay, so we've got heart attack and then finally kidney disease. These are the consequences of having high blood pressure. That's why it's really important at that pre hyper blood pressure stage you make the lifestyle changes necessary so you reduce the risk of having stroke, coronary heart disease, heart attack, kidney disease, so on causes of high blood pressure there's quite a few causes obesity is a cause of high blood pressure lack of physical activity these kind of go hand in hand don't they the less active you are and the potential for becoming overweight you have and obese smoking is a cause excessive alcohol intakes a cause and then finally poor diet specifically excessive salt intake the more salt we have the higher our blood pressure could potentially be. So, 
here we've got the consequences of high blood pressure, what high blood pressure could cause the problems with having high blood pressure, and these are actually the causes. Now, in your exam, you may be asked what the causes of high blood pressure are. However, more importantly, you might be asked how to treat high blood pressure, and that's what we're going to go on to now. So, first of all, we've got medication, so you've got ACE inhibitors, okay. So, these lower blood pressure and make heart attacks less likely. So, with regards to medical um, interventions with regards to hypertension, we can have these ACE inhibitors. However, lifestyle changes. We're going to go on about these in more detail because these are quite important and this has come up in your exams before. So, changes in diet. We just explained how um, excessive salt intake could potentially cause um, hypertension or risk of hypertension and so can obesity. Therefore, changing your diet is a simple thing you can do with regards to um, reducing the risk of hypertension. Changes in exercise routine. On the previous slide, we said potential um, would be not being very physically active. So again, making yourself physically active, changing your exercise routine may prevent the risk of getting hypertension. Changes in social activities, meeting up with friends to have a drink, smoking, and then changes in lifestyle routines as well. So, we're going to go on about these in a bit more detail now. So, evaluation of changes in diet. The reason I'm going for this is because a few of the exam past papers I've looked at, some of the questions have been about hypertension and they've been about evaluating how you could treat um hypertension with lifestyle changes and this is the type of thing that we're looking at okay so changes in diet eating a balanced diet with low salt and low fat and low carbohydrates this in turn is going to reduce the risk of having hypertension high salt diet causes high blood pressure and high fat diet increases risk of atherosclerosis that term that we looked at previously Low carbohydrate reduces fat storage, blood sugar peaks that can um, damage arterial walls. So what we need to do is we need to lower salt, fat, carbohydrates. This is going to reduce the risk of having high blood pressure, atherosclerosis and damaged arterial walls due to um, lack of flat fat storage. Diet plans are relatively easy to follow. However, if we're evaluating it, it could be income dependent. So fresh, healthier food tends to be a bit more expensive than processed food and also people may struggle to prepare healthy meals or stick to diet plans so even though we've got you could say diet plans are relatively easy to follow quite a lot of people struggle moti with motivation because they're sticking to diet plan because being prepared and organized is quite difficult when it comes to um, changing your diet especially if you are busy with work children etc and you haven't got time because cooking healthy meals does take prep and time to do so that's evaluating change in diet but this here is going to help reduce the risk of hypertension evaluation of change in exercise routine i.e just taking regular exercise this helps to prevent weight gain promotes weight loss okay and if already obese will have positive outcomes and reduce hypertension however Change in exercise routine could be a problem if um, someone has a medical condition which prevents them from undertaking exercise or strenuous exercise. For example, if you actually have hypertension, you want to avoid strenuous exercise straight away. Okay, you, you need to exercise, but it won't be strenuous. It'll just be walking and then you have to build it up. Okay, and then also people won't be too embarrassed to exercise or struggle with motivation. Okay, social activities, stop smoking and reduce alcohol intake and you could also reduce caffeine intake as well. Heavy smokers or heavy drinkers will see biggest improvements, however you might struggle to quit due to addiction or dependency um, or due to peer pressure as well, meeting up with your friends etc. So it's easy, it's easy said than done saying stop smoking and reduce alcohol intake, you've got to explain well it might be hard due to being addicted or having um, to deal with peer, peer pressure. So, changes in lifestyle routines, getting sufficient sleep, reducing stress, regular health checks, especially blood pressure monitoring, 
Um, depends on stressful jobs. Can be difficult for some people to make such lifestyle changes due to need for income. It's easier said than done just saying getting a new job. Getting a new job is quite difficult. People um, have a income and then just to say change a job for that same income is difficult. Um, also getting a new job can be quite difficult in terms of the stress that having an interview etc can cause. Um, Reducing stress is, is quite a big one because hypertension can come with stress. So reducing stress, physical activity helps reduce stress. So that's another um, positive in regards to exercising. Okay, before we look at this, you have got a link on your Word document, which is um, to a forms quiz. I want you to do that form quiz um, by the time given on the worksheet for me, please. Once you have done that, this is your homework, and I'm going to give you till Friday to do this, okay? Because this might take a bit more time, or at least you're going to have to look over your notes, etc., to answer it. Try and do it without your notes. Do it without your notes first, and I don't mind you using your notes after. However, please try and do this just from just from memory. So, Daniel is in his 40s and has a desk job with responsibility for a large team and budget. He has to work to strict deadlines. He smokes to help deal with the stress. He also relaxes by joining friends for a drink while watching sport. When at home, he enjoys watching television and playing computer games and he eats a lot of takeaway and microwave for meals. At a recent work medical, his blood pressure was found to be 155 over 95. Comment on Daniel's blood pressure. Explain how these measurements were made. Analyse how this lifestyle has contributed to these measurements. Provide Daniel with information on what the possible consequences of his current lifestyle might be. And finally, give advice on how Daniel might change his lifestyle to improve his health. So, that's your homework task and I want that for Friday. All you need to do is write it down or type it up. If you're typing it up in a Word document, you can send it me via Teams on the private chat. If you're taking a photo with your phone of, a, of, you, um, of it written down, take a photo and again, send that photo to me via the private link on um, the Teams chat. If you have any questions, please let me know. Please don't hesitate to contact me and I'll help you out. Thank you for listening. Bye.